Ladies and gentlemen, today I decided, you know, it's gonna be a rainy day today. I got myself a nice little rain team featuring the absolute legend Bear Tick. Pretty much nobody ever uses this thing, so I figured I'd give it a try and see how he performs when he's a little, little wet in the rain. Also, if you have a second, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot. I'm well on my way to 300k, and less than 60% of the people who watch my videos aren't even subscribed. So it only takes a second, it's free, and you can always change your mind later. But anyway, looking at today's matchup, my opponent is using a team that looks super familiar. And the reason is because it's pretty much exactly the team that I built and used uh, at the very beginning of Scarlet and Violet, um, <laughs> except for the fact there is a Quagsire. So... My dude is working with, you know, pretty much either a very similar team or it could very well be my team. But that should make for a nice little interesting matchup here. So they're going to go ahead and lead off with their Indeedee, toss out the fat ass Teletubby as I'm going to lead off with the boy Nigel. So of course, Telly is going to go ahead and spill his grape drink all over the floor, makes it nice and sticky and the battlefield gets weird. I mainly just want to lead off with Pelipper to get that drizzle up right at the beginning. I know that I have the Damp Rock. Keeping that rain around for eight turns is going to be super nice. This team does revolve around swift swimmers and so he's about to be swimming in some rain here so i figure i expect him to go ahead and set up some screens early on i know that this thing is probably going to be light clay so i figure i can go right for a nice little hurricane here get some pretty decent damage potential confusion but i also know that i can take at least one attack from this thing anyway so it turns out that this fat ass is somehow faster than me so i'm thinking i'm just gonna go right for a u-turn here my hurricane wasn't able to do at least half um, so I can get a nice little pivot on the U-turn going second, and then I can be able to get a Swift Swimmer in easily, be able to outspeed, and with that amount of chip damage, I think I could be able to take care of this thing. So, I have a couple different options on what I want to go into here. Floatzel could be a good option, however, they do have a Quagsire on their team, and if it's Water Absorb, I'm going to be in some serious pain. So I figure I'm going to bring in the boy with the biggest bush in the game. I look at this man! Honestly, you got to just re respect the bush. So, here's my thought process. I'm going to go for the Terra Ice. I would like to get some extra stab damage on this Icicle Crash because uh, with the Reflect Up, I'm not certain that this thing is going to die to that. So he actually ends up switching out and he brings in the Quagsire. He does not give a fuck. That is his literal name. And I'm thinking, okay, that's fine. That means that it's probably not going to be Water Absorb and it's more likely going to be Unaware. That's What's interesting with Quagsire is you're always concerned about setting up because they could potentially be Unaware and just kind of ruin your day. Or if it's water absorbed, you gotta be really careful uh, that thing switching into water attacks, especially for my rain team. So, I put on my nice little snowflake hat, looking extra pretty, and I go right for the icicle crash. Of course, this Quagsire, it turns out to be thick as store-bought gravy. Gotta be like max defense investment with HP. Also, what is up with my man's chin? This guy... <laughs> Guy's jawline is horrendous, but that isn't even the biggest problem. The problem is that this Quagsire is a serious problem to my team. Not having a Grassmon, it's really kind of setting me back against this, and I'm basically going to have to kind of allocate some resources to being able to take this thing down. Once Quagsire goes away, I can, I can basically try to sweep through the team. So, my plan to take care of this Quagsire turns out to be a tiny piece of sushi. Now, hear me out. Norbert does not give a shit whether or not this is a single or a double battle. He does not care if there's a whale on his side of the field. He's still going to be an absolute threat. Tatsugiri is honestly still a pretty good mon uh, just by himself. So I switch into a Toxic, which is fine. This thing is Focus Sash, but I figured uh, I was going to have to come in on something anyway. And now I decide to go for the Dragon Pulse. My idea is that I can get some nice chip with Dragon Pulse and then be able to potentially threaten a kill uh, with a Draco Meteor. As this thing stays in, goes for the Ice Beam, and does laughable damage. My boy Quagmire is, has seen better days on the damage front there, as I'm like literally a 3-inch fish. Uh, but that's perfect. Being Water Dragon type really helps me out here, and I'm just going to go right for the Draco Meteor. I know that that is risky, because of course they do have the Fairy type on their team. Uh, but at this point, I need to kind of make sure that I can at least try to take care of Quagsire. They do, in fact, end up switching out, and now I look like an idiot because I was like, okay, he's going to for sure bring in the, the hammer. Is Of course he does. So in comes the Tooth Fairy. Dude's also working with the same nicknames that I had. Uh, but of course, I cannot touch this thing, and now I've got myself in about the shittiest situation ever. I've got this thing's hammer just... I'm in the shadow of this guy's hammer as this small fish, and I don't really have anything that can switch into it. So I decided to just go for a surf. It is nice and rain-boosted with the stab. Able to do over half, which is amazing, and I just get absolutely smashed into, into fucking... into a fish pancake, which sounds delicious. But here's why I'm fine with Norbert going down. What he did do was I was able to knock the Quagsire down to chip range to where... One of my sweepers should be able to finish it off, and I was able to get really good chip onto the Tinkaton to where now an Earthquake from the Bear Tick should take it out, even with the Reflect Up. So, I bring back in the Big Bush Boy. We got one turn of rain left, so that means I'm only faster for one more turn, but that's all I need to take care of the Fairy. So I go for the Earthquake here, 
with my super cool looking hat, <laughs> I'm able to kill the Tooth Fairy before it was able to harvest too many of my teeth, so with his big ass hammer. Down that thing goes, and we also are going to lose some HP and the rain. So, the bear tick in the rain is actually kind of funny. My dude just relies on, on snow most of the time, being a fucking polar bear. But global warming has pushed it to the point where now bear tick just thrives in the rain. All the snow is melted, and he's like, screw it, we adapt and we overcome. Uh, so on the free switch, they decide to go into the Flamigo. Now I'm thinking, of course, if he switches this in, it's going to be Choice Scarf Flamigo. That's what I was using on this team, and I do not want to be outsped and killed. So what I do decide to do here is, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to switch into Nigel. He does, in fact, actually go for the Brave Bird, but what I was able to do before dying is just make it rain for another eight turns. And I'm now relying on the fact that, hey, maybe I can make uh, a late-game sweep happen in those eight turns with my Swift Swimmers, and hopefully... I uh, will be okay. So, now I decide to bring in the Water Wings. Floatzel is an absolute legend in this new game because of the fact that he got access to Wave Crash, which is an insanely powerful move. With the Rain Boost, This not a lot can switch into this thing. I am actually Choice Banded Floatzel, and this thing hits so damn hard. It's like, honestly, it's, it's too damn much. So, uh, they're going to go ahead and conserve the Choice Scarf Flamigo. That is super annoying because I would prefer that thing gone. Uh, but he does go into the Teletubby here, who comes in on a wave crash and just gets absolutely pummeled and put right into the hell where that thing belongs. So, before dying, of course, the Ndidi does spill some psychic terrain all over the place, and while also polluting the environment, it's now going to block uh, priority moves. So potentially, if I want to go for Aqua Jets, I need to wait for that to go away. But he did switch into the Ndidi because of this Grafaii. It comes in with its psychic seed item. It's going to boost its special defense while also activating this thing's unburden ability. And it turns out that Unburdened Grafaii is actually faster than Floatzel in the rain. And I found myself in this scary situation against this monkey. Or le whatever the hell this thing is. Lemur? I don't know. You know who isn't afraid of weird monkey things? Is Magnets. So I decided to go into uh, the Sandy Shocks. As this thing is actually going to end up going for the Terra here. It turns out to be Terra flying. And that is because this thing now carries acrobatics. He paired that with all the things I talked about earlier. Uh, and since it doesn't have an item anymore, it's now going to get stab acrobatics without an item. It's increased damage. It's, it's insane. But Sandy Cheeks doesn't give a shit. I'm able to take that super nicely. And uh, even with my leftovers, I'm just having a damn picnic over here against this balloon-headed boy. I don't even give it. I don't even give a damn. We're just over here chilling. Sandy Cheeks. I don't, this is one of the more, the more interesting, uh, like paradox Pokemon. I don't know what the hell. How is there an ancient magnet guy? I don't know. I'm not questioning it because this thing's cool as hell. So. Sandy Shocks is the best answer I have to the Grafaii, just because I know that I, he can't knock me out with another hit, and a Thunder just kills in the rain. Uh, but he's actually just going to end up switching back into the Quagsire, the bane of my existence. Old No Chin over here comes in, of course just soaks up that Thunder. But what that does do is he actually has to switch out the Grafaii, meaning the next time that thing comes in, it actually does not have that Unburden ability boost uh, with the speed. So now it's way less scary because I know that I can outspeed with pretty much all my other stuff. So. Uh, I am still going to conserve the Sandy Shocks just in case um, I'm going to need that thing for the Grafaii. And I can just switch right into the Bear Tick here knowing that, you know, Quagsire it doesn't have a whole lot that it can hit me with. So, uh, this thing ends up going for the Recover because, of course, Quagsire's got to do, you know, the most annoying things of all time. And Bear Tick is kind of... Uh, I'm, I'm on that I wanted to get in here because I'm feeling like Floatzel is probably going to be more important for me in the late game. So I figure I might as well try to use up my bear here to try to get some damage on this Quagsire. I know that it's likely not going to be water absorbed, so a wave crash from Floatzel should be pretty decent there. And that ice school crash is going to do a whole dick load of damage. I'm able to do over half, and I get the flinch, which is absolutely amazing. The flinch there probably didn't matter too much because I know I could live any attack that this thing could throw at me, but a two-hit KO on this ice school crash is going to be extremely nice. Without that reflect up, we are looking powerful. Bear Tick is not something to mess with. We're fast as hell. We get access to liquidation in the rain. And even though I've got this stupid looking hat, I am still pretty damn scary with the Ice School Crash with that extra stat. Being able to two hit KO Quagsire is pretty damn impressive, not gonna lie. So, uh, down goes the Sire, and that was the big wall in the way here. So now it's basically trying to, trying to make it happen with what he's got left. So, he's now gonna switch into Young Crimson Chin, and I am totally fine with this. In the rain, I know that I'm faster. Plus, I have a nice little liquidation to, to surprise him with. Uh, he actually ends up switching out, goes into the Grafaii, and I'm thinking the reasoning for that is because he saw that I had Earthquake earlier. Uh, tries to predict the Earthquake, which is actually a really nice play. Unfortunately for him, Liquidation is going to absolutely pop that thing's balloons and basically take a shit on his parade. Uh, so down goes weird-ass E.T. looking boy, and that is uh, another big threat out of the way. And look at Bear Tick, absolutely thriving over here. Uh, he makes a nice play because he, he basically goes into the Grafaii on that turn expecting the Earthquake to... 
uh, to happen and then the rain goes away so then he'd be faster so uh, without any more rain my my Pelipper is dead and I'm now in kind of a, a scary situation because of course he does still have the choice scarf flamigo uh, without the rain bear tick is not going to be able to of course do much here and I basically just let him go down to a brave bird uh, but I was able to put some really good pressure on the team here so at this point he is down to two Pokemon left. He has the Flamigo and that Armor Rouge. I know that my best win condition is likely going to be my Floatzel. Without even having the rain for the Swift Swim, I do have Choice Banded Aqua Jet. And what I do need to do first is get some damage off on this boy Balrog here. So I know that he's going to be Choice Scarf, and I know that I can take a Brave Bird. So he has to switch. So I'm thinking he's easily, obviously, just going to go right in the Armor Rouge. The only other thing left, I can then get a Volt Switch off on it, and then I can bring in the Floatzel, where I want to conserve the Sandy Shocks because 1v1 against the Flamigo, I should be able to take any attack it throws at me. Um, and I'm not relying on Aqua Jet being able to kill that Flamingo uh, at that health. So, uh, on the Volt Switch here against the, the Armor Rouge, I can just go right into Floatzel here and a Choice Band Aqua Jet will easily be able to take care of this thing. Uh, I know that this thing is actually going to likely be the Endure Weakness Policy Weak Armor set. However, with that priority, he doesn't have the Psychic Terrain up to block the priority, and I just win that regardless. So, down goes the Armor Rouge, and now it's just basically one regular-ass Flamingo and, and me. <laughs> this thing comes in. He's, I guess the, what Pokemon has going for this thing, it's not just a Flamingo. He's kind of shaped like a boxing glove, so he's kind of cool. Anyway, I go for the Aqua Jet here just to see if that's going to be enough to take care of it. It is not, and a close combat pops my Water Wings. And down goes the Floatzel. But the Aqua Jet is exactly what I needed. So I was able to stall out the Psychic Terrain uh, to be able to make that late game happen. And now all I have to do is hope that the Sandy Cheeks can take at least one hit from this thing and then kill it with a Volt Switch. So I've never relied on a Magneton thing so hard in my life before. So this thing comes in. Uh, he does go for the close combat. That's its highest damage output. I'm able to live it with 26 HP, which is super clutch. And a Volt Switch is going to take care of it. So... That is going to be the end of the game there. This came down to the wire. That was actually a super fun match. Very interesting playing against pretty much a team that I created and played with for a while. So uh, shout, out to the, shout out to the opponent for being a viewer. And I appreciate all the support. Thank you guys very much for watching. As always, leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. And leave a comment. I do read all the comments. And I have a lot of fun doing it. So I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.